for our Valley basketball debut. Rich Heron coaches SIU after many great years in the Illinois high school ranks. And his key player is Dub Nopsik, a 6'5 senior who can really light it up from three-point range. And after seven years in the NBA, Stan Albeck comes to his alma mater, the Bradley Braves. His franchise player is 6'3 junior from Chicago, Hersey Hawkins, the number nine all-time Bradley scorer. So while it's a little bit cold and wet outside, it'll be hot and dry inside at the Carver Arena here at the Peoria Civic Center. It's SIU and Bradley coming up next. Conference. We're glad you're with us around the network. Interesting contrast between these two programs. Southern Illinois under relatively new coach Rich Heron on the rise still. And Bradley under a very new head coach Stan Albeck on probation. The most important thing to them, Mike Pratt, is winning the Missouri Valley Conference regular season race. It's great to be working with you this year. Thank you, Bob. I'm really excited. This is a tough league from top to bottom, and this is a great game to open it up with. SIU, of course, you saw their outstanding shooter, Dub Nopsik, a moment ago. They also have a young man from Brooklyn, New York, and Steve Middleton, who the coaches feel is one of the best one-on-one -on -one players in the nation. Without a doubt, Steve Middleton can go one-on-one, -on -one, the shake-and-bake move, take it to the hole, pull up and shoot a jump shot, plus he's got the ability to get fouled when he drives, and that's important. Everybody talks about Hersey Hawkins when they first mention the Bradley Braves, and they should. He's an outstanding player. But last year, Jim Less was the floor leader of this team. Mike, they lost him to graduation. They have a real quandary at point guard. So they have 6'7", Trevor Trippi, who Stan Albeck says is as slow as Larry Bird, or slower, playing the point guard position. Well, Stan said that with a big smile on his face. What he likes about Trevor is he's tall. He can see over the defenses. He's very tough, very mentally strong as a basketball player. He thinks the way Stan thinks. SIU is coming off a nice win at home, or rather on the road, at SIU Edwardsville on Thursday night. And meanwhile, the Bradley Braves are coming off a narrow loss on the road at St. Louis University, a team playing very well in the Midwestern Collegiate Conference right now. The Braves have won 22 straight at home. What's the key today for SIU? SIU wants to be very conscious of rebounding, shot selection, and defense. Uh, they'll put the ball up, they'll run up and down the floor with Bradley, but they want to keep that rebounding and defense intact. All right, we'll meet the lineups next. It's the Braves against the Salukis here in Peoria. It's our debut on the Missouri Valley Conference Basketball Network. Back with more. Bay's Missouri Valley Conference opener featuring the Salukis of Southern Illinois University and the defending Missouri Valley Conference champion, Bradley Braves. Before we meet the starting lineups for today's game, a moment that Bradley fans have been waiting for since the conclusion of last year's mystical, magical season. A 32-3 record, 16-0 in conference play, the raising of the banner, symbolic of the Missouri Valley Conference champion, raised by co-captains Trevor Trimpey and Hersey Hawkins. Thank you. 
sophomore from Lorraine, Ohio, number 23, Paul Wilson. Get a forward for SIU, a 6'8 sophomore from Lone Tree, Iowa, 33, Todd Kruger. And six. Bradley has won 22 straight here. The last time they lost was on February 16th of 85 to Indiana State. The tip-off is next. We design. It's tight because this team usually wins at home, Mike. They're very tough on this floor. About 22 in a row is an awful lot of ball games to win, particularly when you play the type of schedule that Bradley plays. And they're very tough here. It's, it's not a place you want to come and bring your team to play. Chuck against Thomas will be a key matchup. And you're looking at Jerry Thomas, number 21, a 6'6 junior from Collins High School in Chicago. The Braves have won 16 of the 23, five in a row, and 12 of the last 14. It was a narrow Braves win last year. SIU has been victimized by narrow losses throughout this season. Bradley has the ball to start things off. A jumper from the left side is short by Paul Wilson. And here come the Salukis of SIU. They're moving from your right to your left in their road maroon uniform. The Braves in their home white, trimmed in red and blue. Bradley will play a man-to-man. -man. They match up pretty good with SIU. That's the problem Rick Heron has on defense. He doesn't like the way his team matches up. Loose ball picked up there by Richardson. A lot of traffic in the corner, a three-man trap. A steal by Hawkins, and on the play, he's fouled by Kai Nurnberger, and there's some of that Bradley pressure defense early in the game. You saw the trap down in the corner, Bob. He's got it there in the replay. Creates a long pass out front. The defense stepped into the passing lane, stole it. It's all created by that trap in the corner, which brought about the lob pass that was easy to pick off. So Nurnberger has an early foul. It'll be a matchup zone defense for SIU. We'll see them switch the defense around today. Percy Hawkins a little too strong. But the rebound from Luke Jackson, a freshman. Trippy distributes right side, driving hard. And it's a blocking foul on Southern Illinois. Appears to be on Tim Richardson, their center, 44. The baseline is covered up. Not quite. You can see his left leg easing in there. Then the body follows. He didn't have position. Good call. SIU, as usual, in a zone. Trevor Trempe from Hawkins. They always take that first look at Hershey Hawkins, don't they? Inside it goes, and the freshman, Luke Jackson, out of Springfield, Illinois, is hacked. Bob, you mentioned the uh, first look for the Hawk, and I think that's probably a very wise look with all that he can do out there. But they seem to keep flowing right into their offense. They look and keep moving. Steve Middleton is the man called for that foul. Checking in for SIU is Billy Ross. 
did not start Thursday at Edwardsville because of a bruise to his calf, but all he did was come in off the bench and have 21 points and seven rebounds. Coaches love that type of help off the bench. If he had a, a couple other fellas, Coach Heron did, uh, doing the same thing, I'm sure he had a few more wins. Luke Jackson is shooting 36% from the line this year. He was an All-Stater and a small school All-American at Calvary Academy in Springfield, a school of only, only 72 students. Not many basketball players. You saw a little pressure there, Bob, to start out with for the first time by the Bradley Braves. White guard Nurnberger looking for penetration. Steve Middleton passing on the shot, and Ross has it. There's not a whole lot there against a very good Bradley man-to-man -man so far. Bradley is really applying the pressure. With the shot clock down to 11, it's released by Richardson, and evidently Luke Jackson got him on the way up. As I was saying, they are doing a very good job out front pressuring the ball. Nice bounce pass inside. Good move from the low post. Got him with the arm and the body. No doubt about that foul. That was the first time that they really have been able to get the ball inside to the block area against the Bradley defense. Richardson, for a big man, has a nice touch from the free throw line. 62%. He played at Coffeyville, Kansas Junior College last year. Rick Heron said, hey, we needed some size at the center position. They went out and got the 6'9", 235 product to play at Southern Illinois. Bradley transitioning very nicely. Air ball from Thomas and the rebound for Steve Middleton of SIU. It's 2-2 early. And had he not thrown that ball out of bounds, he would have been called for traveling anyway. I think he got away with that one. What we saw earlier was SIU turning the pressure back on the Bradley. Kind of created a quick shot, although it's hard to say if Bradley would shoot quickly. Mercy Hawkins for Trevor Trippy. Three-point shot is short from Paul Wilson. Bradley as a team shooting 36% from that range. 48% for Southern Illinois, mostly because of Doug Knopsick. And that was a nice basket inside for Billy Ross. Nuremberger did an excellent job of getting the ball down the floor and getting it into the block quickly. Trevor Trippi tried to force it inside, turned it over, and then getting back on defense, he hacked Ty Nuremberger on his way up. So Trippi with a turnover at one end and a foul at the other. Here comes Middleton down the floor with the ball. So Nuremberger takes it to the hole. That's a good block. Didn't look like a foul, did it? No, but he might not have had the best angle either. Nuremberger, originally from Wolfenbüttel, West Germany. Played at Benton, Illinois High School under Rich Heron. He's an outstanding free throw shooter. Two for two there, he's shooting better now than 92% for the season. Another turnover. Off the hands of Jerry Thomas on a pass by Trevor Trippi. Nuremberger dishing for Ross. The press created that one, Bob. The 1-2-1-1 one, 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 full court press. Created that turnover into the middle. That was Steve Middleton from the right side. Alley oh. back door won't go. It's certainly an up-tempo game. Both teams going up and down the floor with a little bit of pressure, creating some turnovers early, Bob. Trevor Trippi out on top to Wilson. Bradley has done nothing yet to shoot SIU out of that zone, Mike. No, they stuck pretty well in that zone, and it's been very effective, creating long shots like that, turning the ball back for a fast break situation for Southern Illinois. Nuremberger dishing, and warming up from outside is Steve Middleton. He averages 18 a game. His own uh, came into play there also. Created a shot probably. Coach Albeck might not have won it. And at the other end, a transition basket for Hersey Hawkins. Big basket for Bradley. They needed one then or probably a timeout. One of the two, I'm sure Coach Albeck wanted the point. 
Left-handed jumper won't go for Tim Richardson. Trevor Clippy is throwing a lot of high-risk passes out there, isn't he? He's definitely trying to take charge. Uh, seems like he's forcing or pressing a few here. Maybe he needs to look at settling down a little bit, making sure that Well, it's the conference opener, and you expect a little nervousness out there. Todd Kruger will check in. A 6'8", 200 sophomore. He replaces Tim Richardson. Kruger started at center. Rick Heron says, though, starting on my team doesn't mean anything. It's playing time that's important. And we have a foul on SIU. So Terran likes to use his bench. He's got some fellows, particularly some young fellows, that he can bring off the bench, give them some playing time, hopefully beef up that middle play, Bob. We're four and a half minutes in. SIU looking very good so far, leading 10-4. Bradley came out with great defense, and Laley hasn't been able to do anything offensively. And there's another turnover. Bob, that time they had a boxing one, it looked like, with Nurnberger on uh, the Hawks. Took him going through that zone, and everyone else stayed put. So he had a little boxing one, gimmick defense that time. Off the head of Nopsik, it went for a while, then he got control back. Pretty good defensive pressure here, man to man for Bradley. And on the turnover, a traveling violation on Luke Jackson. He took a step and a half before he started his way down the floor. We've got a timeout on the floor. Five minutes in, it's SIU 10, Bradley 4 in our Missouri Valley Conference Saturday debut. 60% for SIU so far. Bradley, ice cold. One out of eight comes out to about 12.5%. And that's why they're trailing 10-4. They've had a lot of turnovers, Mike, and that has uh, really kept them from getting into their offense. Well, Bradley does make a lot of turnovers uh, during the course of the season so far, but I think it has a lot to do with the type of offense they run, they shoot the ball, they press. Uh, what's really been, I think, important is SIU's been able to press Bradley effectively. It's out of bounds off the hands of Tim Richardson after the miss by Kai Nurnberger. And Bradley will have it, and this time down the floor, Stan Albeck has to be looking for some kind of continuity on offense. Looks, looks like a box in one for SIU. Wilson dumping it out for Trippy. Hawkins open, short. Back the other way comes Steve Middleton. Almost a steal. Hersey Hawkins playing some D right there. They've shown a lot of respect to Hawkins already by going to a gimmick defense, Bob, and I think that's an important uh, statement made by the SIU coaching staff. Let's see how Bradley turns around and handles it. It has not been an artistic success so far, but the folks from Southern Illinois like what they see. That jumper won't go from the outside, as attempting it was Dub Nopsik. At the other end, transition basket. It's Greg Jones with his first two. A 6'5 junior out of Robeson High School in Chicago. He's averaging seven points a game. The outlet pass and the second pass to the shooter made that whole fast break. Percy Hawkins off to the races. And draws the foul all over him, Todd Kruger. The fast break seems to be triggered now with uh, Bradley's ability to get the outlet pass going. If there's one thing that Hersey Hawkins needs to work on, according to Coach Albeck, it is his ball handling skill. He, of course, is an outstanding professional prospect, but he's going to have to learn how to handle double teams and things like that. Wayne Harry coming in. Well, Bob also, Coach Allback, mentioned us that he is a very, very unselfish young man. Has the ability to pass when Coach Allback would really like to see him shoot. I took the ball to the hole that last time in the break very well. He moved the ball around, drew the foul. That was an NBA-type play. Hersey started the season the number 24 Bradley all-time scorer. He's already passed up 15 different guys this year. 10-7 now. The press seems to be slowing SIU down somewhat. Middleton, great feet underneath, and an easy layup for Tim Richardson. 
Well, Steve Middleton, a great one-on-one -on -one player, pretty good passer we saw on that play. Showed some excellent passes. Showed that. Little penetration there for Paul Wilson. They work it around with Hawkins to Trippy. Three-pointer was too strong. Trevor Trippy is their three-point man. Here's middle and back the other way. Nice speed, reverse layup, won't go for Harry. And then underneath again, it's Richardson. He has the half dozen. Richardson's earning his keep around the board tonight, doing a good job rebounding defensively and scoring some hoops for him. 14-7 for the visitors. It's their largest lead. Jumper won't go from Luke Jackson. And then getting rebounding position was Steve Middleton drawing the foul on Paul Wilson. Bob, uh, you mentioned earlier that Coach Heron talked about rebounding being very, very important. I think they've done an excellent job so far not allowing second shots for the Bradley Braves. That's been critical. Bradley gets one shot. SIU has been able to get the ball back and go on to offense. Bradley has one of their crowd favorites in there coming back from the knee problem, Bruce Morgini. He's wearing number 52. And good defense in the backcourt by Kai Nurnberger forced Hersey Hawkins to walk around him. Dan Albeck at the other end gets a technical. He said the defensive man did not give his man a room enough for that first dribble. Was he right? Awful close. Uh, if a replay does come up, we'll see it. But the rule is that he has to be allowed to come down and room to dribble one time. Does the defensive man give him room? I'm not sure. Awful close. And that's why they're refereeing and we're here, I'm sure. It's awful close. So the Salukis will go to the line. They will send Dub Nopsik out of Lawrenceville, Illinois. The folks in that area remember his senior year very well. They only went 34-0. He's got kind of an unusual foul shooting stance, Bob. He looks to the fan, turns his shoulders and squares up ultimately at the basket and shoots. That's not something you've seen a lot. Different style. Two shot technical plus the possession. Len Bertolini is set to check in for Bradley. 16 to 7 SIU. Yes, we are surprised. Richardson fails on the layup. That could have given them an 11 point lead. Wilson. Nice fake and the shot, and he was fouled. SIU did a good job of getting back that time, covering back on defense. Down here, Nopsik made a beautiful shovel pass. No doubt about that shot, as you saw. Uh, the position was not, was not there by Hare. Wilson took the ball to the basket, but earlier we mentioned down here, Nopsik rolled to the basket, dished off beautifully inside. They missed the shot, but Nopsik seems to be able to penetrate that defense pretty well today. Paul Wilson out of Lorraine, Ohio. Honorable mention All-American in high school there, a 6'6 sophomore. He's shooting 79% for the line, has his first two. And it's 16 to 9 with 12.25 remaining in the first half. Bob Carpenter along with Mike Pratt from Carver Arena at the Peoria Civic Center. And after traveling here in the wee hours this morning, and in your case, this morning late, Mike, we're just glad to be here. It's been tough in the state of Illinois to get anywhere in the last 20 hours or so. Only the Pony Express has gone through, I believe. <laughs> These folks almost had an announcerless game today. That would have been fun. Again, Nobstick penetrated the middle, penetrated the paint. Uh, maybe he needs to look now to pull up and hit a little jump shot out of the paint area. Doing a good job taking the ball to the hole, creating something. Bradley down by seven with the ball. Hawkins for Len Bertolini out of Chicago St. Patrick High School. He checked in a moment ago, a 6'3 junior. He's their three-point man. Fails on that attempt. Rebound, Hersey Hawkins, a lot of traffic. It's a possession call, and it belongs to Southern Illinois. They're really all over Hersey. Exactly. That time they had a man behind him, as we'll see on this replay. Uh, Hawkins goes up, gets the rebound. You see three guys coming on him, 25, 34, and 14. Nopsik on the left side for Steve Middleton. This shot is off to the right. Pulled down there by Greg Jones. Almost a turnover at midcourt. Hawkins trying to find some operating room. 
knocked out of the hands of Paul Wilson on alert defense by Wayne Harry. Now they're going to say Wilson lost it on his own. Game's getting a little raggedy here. You see the hawk with the pass. Here's one for the highlight film. Football, that's all it is, is football. In baseball, that's a balk. Should we give him first base? I don't know. Kai Nurnberger checks back in. I don't ever think I've ever seen that before. A, a shot go backwards. Uh, you've seen him go straight up, but backwards, uh, not very often. 11.50 remaining first half. It's 16-9 SIU. Both teams are 6-6. Six six. Three-pointer won't go for Doug. Now six. It's booted out of bounds. The baseline official. Well, who's been very quiet, Bob, has been Middleton. Been very quiet for a leading scorer on the team. So far, he has four points, but both of those came in quick fashion. One right after the other. On a sustaining basis, not a whole lot there. Brian Welch was operating with the ball. Now on top, it's Kai Nuremberger. Bradley man-to-man -man all the way so far. Left side jumper counted for Tom Kruger, averaging three a game, 48% from the field. That's his first basket. Basket, he's out of Lone Tree, Iowa. He's out in the corner on that shot also. Wilson for Hawkins, bad pass. It was behind Hershey. Back the other way, Brian Welch. And reaching in from behind is Len Bertolini. We'll say Coach Allback has a little concern about his point position right now. He really needs somebody out there to stabilize the situation for him. That was a bad pass to Hawkins, and SIU made him pay. Bertolini on the foul. And Anthony Manuel is in. He was projected as the point guard at the start of the season, but he's been struggling. That's why they have a 6'7 point guard, Trevor Trippi. They found it very difficult to replace Jim Left here in Peoria. That was an alley-oop, and nobody was there for the youth. A little mixed uh, direction among the players out there, but you talked about Manuel. He, they had high hopes of him taking over for less. He had a little weight problem, Bob. He got in so tall back to doghouse, I believe. Aaron Berger, feeding it inside, missing on the jumper, Todd Kruger, who looks like he's being assertive, wanting to shoot the ball. Hershey Hawkins, unbelievable backdoor pass for Greg Jones. So some excellent floor since that time. He saw the whole floor, picked out the guy under the basket. Offensive foul. Late call. Nurnberger bumping Manuel down to the floor. The call did not come until the Bradley bench reacted. So we've got 9.44 remaining in the first half of play. Seven points is the lead for the Salukis of SIU. Mop, like to remind you, the announcers for this game have been contracted for and approved by the Missouri Valley Conference. Any use, rebroadcast, or other transmission of this game without the written consent of the Missouri Valley Conference and creative sports marketing is prohibited. Bob Carpenter and Mike Pratt from Peoria. The Braves have won 22 straight here, but they haven't looked like it so far this afternoon. They're down by seven, but we've got a long way to go. Nobody's hit a three-pointer so far. 0 for 7 between the two teams. That's unusual for these two teams, particularly with Nostek also. Bertolini can't hit. And there's the tip. One-handed flying through the air from Hersey Hawkins. He has five. He's averaging 26. Kind of taking him out of the offense on the half-court situation, Bob. It's kind of unusual because you would expect him to see it touch the ball a lot. Crowd was reacting to Manuel being dumped by Nuremberger as they collided. Now they match up with the ball. Doug Nopsik. Not a whole lot of shooting lanes for him. Hersey Hawkins is defending him. He gets loose back door and hits from the right baseline. Nicely done. Good movement without the ball by Doug Nopson. Excellent. He ran the defensive player through two picks to get that open shot, and then was able to stick it. Hersey Hawkins almost walked with the ball. Rich Heron gave us the signal. Manuel from outside, missing badly. Rebound Nopsik. Here come the Saluki. Back through from Nuremberger. Bertolini took it away. Two on one. Hershey! 
fishing basketball box. We'll see if the slam gets the Braves motivated here. Five second call. Another turnover. A couple back to back plays in favor of the Bradley Braves. Brought the people up, people up on their feet, feet, and then just might turn this thing around. Brian Welch is gone, so you're looking at his replacement, Steve Middleton. And looks like Tim Richardson, their 6'9 center, will check in as well. He will replace Todd Kruger, who had a couple of points while he was in there. And the Braves now with a chance to get back two within three. They trailed by as many as seven here in the first half. SIU back in his own defense from the man to man. Don't go for Hersey Hawkins. Ball controlled by Bertolini. It was bumped away from him by Steve Middleton. And again, SIU can sit in that zone as long as Bradley is cool from the outside. Exactly. It also helps to be able to know where Hawkins is at. Ordini, a nice feed for Greg Jones. Greg has six. He's averaging seven. And a foul in the backcourt on Manuel, fouling Nuremberger. Anthony Manuel, his first. 15 foul on the Braves. Taking off his warm-up is Jay Schaefer, a 6'7 freshman from Benton, Illinois. Yes, there is a Benton to Carbondale pipeline because Rich Heron was the high school coach there for many years. He had 616 wins in high school there, 21 regional titles. Obviously, the band is very successful, decided to bring some of those players with him. They've, they've all been contributing here today, too. Richardson for Nobsek and back, double teaming defense and a foul on Bruce Mordini from behind. Bradley doing a good job in the man to man, picking up some good half court pressure box. Rich Aaron says the difference between high school and college coaching, in college, you can't change their personalities like you can in high school. Stan Albeck says he expected to finish his career in the NBA, but he's glad to be here in Peoria. Says the folks have been tremendous to him so far in his return to his alma mater. Underneath, big rebound, a basket for Jay Schaefer, then help for SIU. Did a great job with his hands, controlling the ball, kept it alive, stepped across the lane through the defense, and did a very, very pretty reverse layup for two points. Also got to the foul line, Buff. He did. Another foul on Morgini, his second. So he will take a seat. Mordini with two fouls and two points. He had that slam that got the crowd into it. Schaefer failing on the three-point play. So it's 22-17 SIU, 7.05 left for half. Hawkins for Bertolini. The three-point man can't hit. Nobody else can from the outside. Dumping it in. Good defense there by Bertolini to keep them from getting a close-in shot. Nuremberger, three-pointer. What is that, our second one of the night? He has five, and evidently we've got a technical somewhere. Your team's up by eight. You just scored a three-pointer, and then you get slapped with a tee, and Hersey Hawkins will shoot it. It's a foul that's not always called, also. A lot of that goes on. Referees, obviously, are staying on top of things today, Bob. Richardson was the man called on that. Rich Herenstein, though, playing pretty well so far. Here's the three-pointer. And he tipped it away from the defensive man who was trying to get it in bounds very quickly. So that was a pretty obvious call. And what it does is allows the defense to get set up while the offense is chasing the ball down in the cheap seat. It's a real ploy, obviously, defensively, to help them get set. Dan Albeck says, how come I can't get that much time with the official? He's going down to the middle of the floor. Stands out of his box. This will be interesting. 
talk to all of them now, they say. So you talk about that call we just saw on the replay. It's done a lot, not often called. Excited two gentlemen that sit on both those benches. intentional they gave him two shots Percy Hawkins made the second one 25 to 18 this could be a Bradley three or four point play based on what they do with the ball Northern Illinois back in that uh, boxing chaser or boxing one on Hawkins Bertolini thought about the three-pointer Manuel penetrating Bertolini unable to get a shot because of good defense by Doug Nobson Cuts off the glass. 25-20. 6.05 left in the half. Aaron Berger for Nobs. Middleton one-on-one, -on -one, except it turned into a one-on-three. Hawkins has eight, and the Braves are back to within three. And again, Hersey Hawkins capitalizing on the transition game. Absolutely. And Manuel is really doing a fine job as a point guard running that transition game. All the Braves down the floor, easy two for Doug Nobson. They thought they had the turnover, couldn't come up with it. Nobody back on defense. A lot of confusion in midcourt, bodies everywhere, ball scores out, easy basket for SIU. If you're wondering why you keep seeing us sitting at the table behind Stan Alpeck, yes, we are on the other side from the cameras here in Peoria. Offensive board, Jones can't get it down, and that'll be a foul on Manuel, as Steve Middleton was trying to make his way down the floor, but Anthony got in his way. You know, Bob, I think it's going to be important to watch what Bradley does with his boxing chaser on Hawkins. That's the first shot he's had in a while. Let's see how patient they are in getting somebody else shot. Last time down the floor, Wilson got a very good shot. They scored two. That time, Hawk had a shot. It didn't go in. But let's see how they handle it, whether they continue to try to get him a shot out of that uh, against that defense or they try to work it inside to somebody else. Wayne Harry. 6-3 senior from Nashville, Illinois, back in. Nuremberger getting some instructions from the coach. As he returned to the bench. Pete Middleton. He was the number one scorer last year as well with 16 points and four rebounds a game. He wants that 29 against West Texas State as his season high. He's improved his average a couple of points here in his junior season. And we'll take a timeout. 458 remaining in the first half of play. We're in Peoria for the debut of Valley Basketball on Saturday afternoon. It's SIU by seven so far. Mike, it's been a bit ragged, and the Salukis capitalized from a wild situation a little bit earlier when nobody for Bradley was left down the floor defending. It was a hot potato. It was kicked around. Ended up in SIU's hands for what you might say a very, very cheap two points, huh? Dub Nobsic says it counts just like a 15-foot jumper. You better believe that. 29-22, we're in the last five minutes of the first half. Bob Carpenter and Mike Pratt from Peoria. Next week we'll be in Omaha. suffered in this first half from a lack of continuity on offense. They've just been unable to get into their offense, and Hersey Hawkins has done most of his damage. Fast break and one tip in. That was a pretty good driving job by Anthony Emanuel on the right baseline. Looks like Todd Kruger got his third foul. Bob, I think you made an excellent point. Bradley's been kept out of the rhythm. Simply, I feel, because Southern Illinois has changed defenses effectively. They've gone from a man to a boxing 
Kaser on Hawkins to a 1-2-2 two, two, to a 2-3. They've done a very good job going in some presses also. They've kept Bradley off balance. Back in for SIU is Tim Richardson. He replaces Todd Kruger, who has to take a seat with three fouls. Anthony Manuel, before the season, they said about Bradley, they will go as far as Anthony takes them as the point guard. So far, he has not taken them too far, but it's time for him to assert himself as the Valley season gets underway. A good place to step up and become a leader, your opening game in the Valley. Speaking of opening games, a lot of teams are opening up today. Drake beat Illinois State a little earlier in the first Valley game at Des Moines, but a whole schedule of games today. And Jackson has this loose ball. Here comes Percy Hawkins. Manual, penetrating, dishing. Yes, sir. Paul Wilson with a three-pointer. And that is the first three-pointer of the game for Bradley. Only the second in the game. And look at Anthony Manuel on the floor looking for the loose ball. Seems to me like this young man trying to work his way out of Coach Albeck's doghouse. Hustling on defense, penetrating, trying to get Bradley into their offense. Wayne Harry on the dribble. Manuel with good defense. Knobstick underneath. Great speed, but blowing the layup there was Billy Ross as he had the double pump. And it'll belong to Bradley on the out-of-bounds. Speaking of the Valley schedule, later this afternoon, Indiana State at Illinois State. Tonight, the Shockers play host to Creighton in Wichita, and the Golden Hurricane playing host to Drake in Tulsa. And then Monday, Illinois State goes to SIU to play the Saluki. Back in is Ty Nurnberger. So you folks, get out and support your Valley teams today. And Monday night, as the conference season gets into full swing, we've got Drake at Creighton next Saturday for you. Jones on the miss. A lot of traffic in there. Working his way through Hersey Hawkins. Following him was Tim Richardson. That's number two on him. He's coming back to rebounding. I think until that time, SIU had done a very good job of no second shots or even third shots, which some teams do give up. That time, even though they fouled the Hawk, they had three guys in position very tightly on him. Hersey Hawkins now has nine out of Westinghouse High School in Chicago. Last year, his sophomore season from a scoring standpoint was the second best ever at this school, and Bradley has great tradition. Now they're as close as they've been in a long time, just one point back. They did trail by seven, 29-22. put it up over Manuel. It's well short. After a tip, Anthony has the loose ball. Percy Hawkins off to the races. Off of him. And the Bradley fans can't believe it. They thought that Wayne Harry had knocked it out of bounds. Coach Allback did too. He ran the midcourt. Good feet by the freshman Luke Jackson. And the 
double team, somebody's got to be open, and the Braves found the open man. They handled it just like a clinic. 31-30, traveling, and now the Braves have a chance to take the lead. Timeout on the floor, we'll keep it right here with two minutes and 11 seconds left. Mike, what has allowed Bradley to get back in the game so quickly after being down by seven at our last timeout? Well, I think uh, Manuel, the little point guard, has done a good job of trying to get them into some kind of rhythm on the half-court offense. Also, they've really brought up their intensity level defensively. They've done a good job on ball side guarding the Southern Illinois players. Off side, they were losing uh, a few guys with the pick, and SIU was getting some easy shots early. They seem to have been able to handle that now. Also, I think this is a good timeout for Coach Heron's part. In that last two minutes, he doesn't want to lose this game to the crowd, doesn't want to fall behind, or walk off this floor with that um, lack of uh, momentum. Well, coming up on Saturday, January 17th at 1 p.m. Eastern, noon central, our cameras will be in Omaha with the Drake Bulldogs take on the Blue Jays of Creighton. Hope you can join us for more exciting Valley basketball next week. We'll have appearances at Wichita and again at Creighton coming up later this month. Right now, Wichita, Bradley, and Tulsa consider the top three teams in the conference. And you got to like the way the Shockers are playing after they upset KU the other night. Tulsa struggling a little bit, losing to Oral Roberts in a non-conference game. They'll host Drake this evening. And Bradley has the better of the bench scoring so far, Mike. That's because Greg Jones has 10 of those 12. He's done very well down the low post to the foul line a couple times. A real advantage when you've got guys coming off the bench producing right away. Bradley with a chance to take the lead for the first time since the first minute of the game. We're less than two minutes from the end of the first half. Manuel just can't get it to fall. Nurnberger, a possession with Manuel. This one will belong to Bradley. Two guys about the same size battling in the lane of the Giants for a rebound. How about that one, Buff? Possession rule, good here. Who wants to see point, point guards jump up anyway? The little guys came battling as the tip just wouldn't go in. Nurnberger determined to get that ball down the floor. Manuel wouldn't let him. Wilson for Hawkins. Percy in the first half has 10. Greg Jones can't get the turnaround. Oh, he looks bigger than 6'5", 214. about Anthony Manuel taking the charge. He's really shown us a lot. Obviously, he's got a lot of pressure on him because of high expectations. Middleton all the way down the floor. Probably should have stopped out there further at the foul line. He took it all the way. He was uh, wide open for that charge, which Manuel took. And that's three on the leading scorer, who only has four points in this first half. It's surprising SIU has been leading like they have without good scoring from Middleton. Anthony Manuel has two. From the line, he's a 72% free throw shooter. His best game as a freshman, 10 points in 10 minutes against West Texas. He's out of Crane High School in Chicago. He was all city. Let's we'll see if they put a press on if they make this foul shot. They take the lead with a minute 31 remaining. job of going straight up the gut of that defense by Nuremberger to alleviate the press. Here's Nobson, a little short. That was a two-pointer. Got the rebound. Off the glass. Too strong, but he drew the foul. Looks like Luke Jackson, the freshman center, is second. Tremendous effort on Nobson's part. Everybody jockeying for rebounding position, aren't they? They sure are. Big guys in there battling out. Nobson picks up the loose ball because he's the right place at the right time. Takes it back to the hole, draws the foul. Maybe Nobson in high school, maybe his parents used to sit over on the left side of the court. He'd have to face them before he could take the free throw. What do you think? Remember Al Greer? 
when he played with the old 76ers, he had a very different foul shot also. SIU has the lead again, 33-32, one minute remaining. 37 on the shot clock. Big basket for Bradley. They can go in with a little momentum here. Three-pointer, too short for Hersey Hall. Underneath, it won't go for Paul Wilson. Here comes SIU. Nurnberger off the glass. Did he avoid the foul in getting the basket? He may have avoided the foul. I don't think a foul was called on Nurnberger. They blew the whistle because of the injury at the other end. You'll see a big crowd underneath the basket. Bodies on top of bodies. Lost his balance in the air. Came right down. Right on that hip. That, that young man will have a shortness there. Uh, Bradley has been riddled by injury. Donald Powell, their junior swing man, out with a broken wrist for the season. Suffered at Evansville right before Christmas. Keith Berry is just coming back from a broken hand, suffered six weeks ago. They really can't afford to lose any more of their better players on the front line. I really think they have to miss Powell right now. All the points, all the rebounds, and the block shot. Good to see Wilson up and walking because he did come down on that hip from uh, quite a ways up. Len Bertolini will be back in to replace him, number 44 for the Bradley Braves. I tell you, that was an outstanding job at the other end of the floor by Nuremberger getting that basket, avoiding the charging foul. The defense was set. He just eased right around it and still made the basket. Very impressive move. Bradley can play for one if they want to. Shot clock is off. 17 seconds remaining. It would take a three-pointer to send us to the locker room tie. Rebound. Three seconds left. Three pointer. No. And it's 35 32 SIU at the half. Their three point man had a chance to hit twice and couldn't get either one. So SIU leading Stan Albeck's team by three points after 20 minutes of play. Our halftime activities are coming up next on the Valley Network. Informed and enlightened, they'll give you that personalized assistance that most other stores don't. And the Globe Auto team will help you find the auto part that's just right for your car. From the supply of name brand products you can trust, at competitive prices too. Count on the Globe Auto team of experts. They know about service and auto products. Globe Auto, 3600 Harmon Highway, your independent parts store in Peoria. SIU on the road here at Peoria against the Bradley Braves. Doug Nopsick has eight, so does Tim Richardson. They lead the Southern Illinois effort so far as the leading scorer, Steve Middleton, only has six. And for the Bradley Braves, Percy Hawkins has ten. But the big story is Greg Jones coming in off the bench. He has ten as well at halftime. He's only averaging seven points a game. The gals from the Tremont High School pom-pom squad are here. After 20 minutes of play, it's SIU on the road, leading Bradley 35-32. We designed the Ford Escort GT with an advanced port fuel injected engine. Next, we added a more precise cornering front and rear suspension, along with a carefully selected interior. And we did it all just for fun. This is Escort GT.
the beginning, there were only two. Thin socks and thick socks. Centra, a revolution in sport sock design combining the best qualities of thick and thin into the most comfortable, high-performance sport sock ever. All possible because of SAI Super Sock technology and DuPont High Bulk Orlon Acrylic. Centra, protection without bulk, performance without weight. the debut of our Saturday afternoon coverage of the Missouri Valley Conference. It's SIU on the road, 35-32 at the half. Our halftime activities start now with my partner Mike Pratt on the floor to talk to Ron English from the Valley office in St. Louis. Thanks, Bob. I'm here with uh, Ron English. Ron, it's great to be back in the Valley. That's a great start. This ball game is exciting. Both teams going after each other. Tell us, uh, give us your impressions of the first half, the Valley in particular, from the month of December on. Well, I think this is what uh, everybody is going to see in the Valley this season. A lot of competitiveness. Uh, the opener the other night, Drake defeated Illinois State by a point. Here today, we see Southern Illinois playing tooth and nail with Bradley. And, uh, you know, who would have thought that? Bradley uh, at home, uh, supposedly the better team, but uh, Southern Illinois giving them all they can handle today. And uh, I think that's just the way the conference season is going to go the rest of the year. Um, tooth and nail, it'll be a dogfight right down to the end. Obviously, SIU, a much improved basketball team. Could, would you say that the league itself is much improved and very, very balanced? I would say that is probably the key word, Mike, uh, balance. Uh, there really doesn't look like there is any team that could dominate. Maybe Tulsa, we don't know that. Uh, it's a long season. Bradley, of course, dominated last year. Doesn't look like that's going to happen this year. A lot of even teams, a lot of competitiveness, and, uh, and a lot of close games. Let's spend a second here and talk about the TV package. A record year for the Missouri Valley on television. Give us a little background. Tell us about what we're going to see in the next few weeks. Well, we're real happy with creative sports marketing. Uh, Bray Carey, in concert with Commissioner Jim Haney, have uh, really done a superb job in putting together the TV package. Uh, we've got a record number of affiliates uh, who will be uh, watching the games this year. We uh, have a record number of games on the air. We're going to have 12 games on the Missouri Valley Creative Sports Package. We've got a Saturday doubleheader, two of them, in fact, this year. We've got two games on Sunday this year for the first time. And, and there's a lot of newness, a lot of things that we're doing for the first time, and uh, uh, we couldn't be happier. We're all real excited about the basketball that's going to be played in the Valley. Um, tell us a little bit, a few stars. Tell us the people we got forward to looking to. Well, Bob, excuse me. Back to you, Bob. Okay, Mike, thank you very much. We had to cut things short there because we have more halftime activities coming up for you. In just a moment, the folks in Peoria enjoying this one, even though their team is down by three. Of the three leading corn insecticides, only Diphonate gives you control without compromise. Control of both rootworms and cutworms. Counter compromises on cutworms by just suppressing them. And when it comes to rootworms, Lord's Bank compromises on consistency of control. Only Diphonate doesn't compromise on either rootworms or cutworms. Diphonate. Control without compromise. The Queen is selling the Crown Jewels home. Oh, glory be no. Often this topaz is an automobile. Uh, curious name, Holmes. Anyway, these royal blokes are bloody well bargaining. It's loaded and price low. The 87 Topaz LS at Royal Lincoln Mercury Mercour. Now, just 9713. The LS comes complete with cruise control, AM FM stereo cassette, front wheel drive, air conditioning, and more. Now reduced $1,900 at Royal Lincoln Mercury Mercour. Smashing, Holmes. Elementary, Watson, elementary. Remember those bitter cold weathers past? Guess what? They're coming again. Midstay Heating and Cooling would like you to know about our Amana Air Command 80 high-efficiency gas furnace. This furnace is priced low and can cut your heating costs in half. 
We can finance it for you at 9.9% and give you a 25-year warranty. You can't afford that old gas guzzling furnace anymore, so call me now. Bill Crawford at Mid-State Heating and Cooling, Peoria, Bloomington, and now in Lincoln. Look for our ad in the yellow pages. When you take away all the toppings, some burger places are making such a fuss about these days, it has to make you wonder, is there a reason why they aren't making a fuss about their burgers? Well, at the heart of every Hardee's quarter pound burger, you'll find nothing but 100% pure American beef, all thick and juicy, all by itself. You see, unlike the other places, we have nothing to hide. Hardee's, we're out to win you over. Make my day. The afternoon fun and games start at 4 with the all-new dating game, weekdays on TV19. It's half time here in Peoria at one of the finest facilities in the Valley. And coming up with SIU leading by three, a look at both SIU and Bradley University. Southern Illinois University at Carbondale means being the best. Southern Illinois University, where good things happen. Last spring, actor Richard Thomas came to Bradley's campus as part of the Gretchen Ibn Lectureship Series. He came to campus and sat in on some of our classes and critiqued the play that we were doing at the time, and talking to him was wonderful. Have you ever become so involved in your performance that it's very hard to separate it from your own identity? The anger, the love, the fear, the hate, hope, the things that we use, which are our tools, which most people don't want to feel unless they're forced to feel and which we explore willingly are like very, very dangerous chemicals that we have to be careful with. In order to keep from becoming self-destructive and playing with them, and it's working and not play with them, very important to develop as rational and as sane a lifestyle as you can. Because this lecture series is an ongoing process, we are definitely looking forward to having more professionals come to Bradley's campus. The campaign for Bradley. Excellent today and tomorrow. Dan Albeck says one of the things about Bradley is you can't recruit physical education majors because that major at this fine academic university does not exist anymore. They're good students and pretty good basketball players. The Bradley Braves are down by three at the half. The Salukis of SIU leading back with more in a moment. they have here in downtown Peoria at the convention center. Some of the first half highlights include Hersey Hawkins with an outstanding pass and then Luke Jackson underneath and Greg Jones had a big first half, Mike, 10 off the bench. Greg did an excellent job. The two passes before it got to him made it happen, but he went ahead and stuck it in the hole. A nice steal. You see what Bertolini steals it, takes it up floor to the Hawks. And Mordini puts it in with a dunk that brought the fans to their feet. If you remember that, these fans got real excited with that one. It, it, was, a ball, it was a play that brought them back into the ball game. Well, they're sitting around now waiting for the second half to start. It will momentarily. SIU by three, 35-32. Second half in a moment. 
The trouble with a used car is you never know how it's been used. Or abused. At National Car Rental, our used cars are cream puffs. They average just over a year old, so they're broken in, not broken down. And each comes with our exclusive 24,000-mile, two-year limited warranty covering every major system. At National, we think when you buy a used car, you shouldn't be the one that gets used. For a sweet deal on a used car, check your phone book for the National Car Rental location near you. Clydesdale has been known as a special breed. Today, the Clydesdale symbolized Budweiser's dedication to quality, superior ingredients, exclusive beechwood aging, and a distinctively clean, crisp taste that only Budweiser can offer. Quality taste. Because this Bud's for you. Langloss Electronics in Peoria Heights is your home and auto electronics headquarters. From the top selection of name brand radar detectors and scanners to a complete line of cordless telephones and car stereos. Trust the experts at Langloss Electronics to help you before and after the sale. With years experience, Langloss Electronics knows that the correct installation of a radar detector and car stereo is essential to top performance. See the top performers at Langloss Electronics, prospect at Lake Peoria Heights. Just about set for the second half tip-off here in Peoria. Bob Carpenter along with Mike Pratt on the Missouri Valley Conference Network. And our debut, let's check some of the first half stats, Mike. First of all, how about the shooting in terms of field goal percentage? The three-pointers were basically non-existent for the first 15 minutes of this game. For two teams who really like to shoot it and shoot it well, it was a very cold afternoon. Bradley only 30% and 43% roughly for Southern Illinois from the field. And only 2 of 14 between the two teams. So not much to talk about in regard to the three-pointer having any influence on this game today whatsoever. Free throws. Outstanding for SIU so far. And not bad for Bradley. A lot of fouls. Both teams went to the line a lot in the first half. Bradley down by three. What's the key for them, Mike, in the second half? Is it keeping Anthony Manuel involved as the point guard, even though Trevor Trimpey will start in the second half? Well, Trimpey did not get off to a good start. Manuel did a very good job off the bench. If he gets back in, maybe keeping him at the point later on will keep the uh, momentum for the Bradley team on offense. Doug Knopsick and Tim Richardson each have eight to lead SIU. The point guard, Ty Nurnberger, has chipped in with seven. Percy Hawkins has 10, as does Greg Jones off the bench for the Bradley Braves, who are underway with SIU controlling the ball in the second half. Knobster tried to go inside, tipped away, off to the races, Paul Wilson for Percy Hawkins, and following him was Nuremberger just racing by. That'll be number three on the point guard very quickly. They now have Nuremberger and Steve Middleton, as well as Todd Kruger with three fouls. Wilson created that whole thing by playing defense perfectly, stepped around the offensive player, got a hand in the passing lane without fouling. That was the key. Kicked the ball out, and up the floor they went. As a team, the Braves came in shooting 72% from the line. Bradley 5-0 at home. They've won 22 straight here. That's a dozen for Hershey Hawkins, who still needs 14 just to reach his season average of 26. Pressure is affected by Bradley here. Trying to create an up-tempo situation, Bob. The first couple minutes will be important. Now six short. Braves could take the lead again. Trevor Turkey, scoreless in the first half, did not play after the opening minute. Anthony Manuel came in and sparked this club. And I don't think Stan Altex will hesitate to go to him if things don't warm up. But they do with Paul Wilson, who now has two three-pointers. He's shooting now about 45% from three-point range. It's a good way to start the second half with a three-pointer. Bradley 37-35. The biggest lead since it was 2 nothing. Luke Jackson with a steal, and then he just throws it away. Little Lang just grabbed the ball, picked it up in front. Hawkins 
Hopkins now with a dozen. Greg Jones, all 10 of those off the bench. But they have two starters, Jerry Thomas and Trevor Trippi, who have not scored at all. Nurenberger for Todd Kruger on the left side. Steve Middleton, it kept him quiet. Tim Richardson on the travel. Richardson needs to become effective down there for SIU to gain momentum during the course of the year. He's got to be a factor when he gets the ball down there low with his back to the basket. It makes a lot of pressure off your perimeter players if he can score down there. Around the perimeter they go. Trevor Trippi now in for Luke Jackson. Strong move, too strong on the shot. And an equally strong rebound from Tim Richardson. Yes, sir. Right side, there's Steve Middleton. He has eight. We've been looking for him to do that all day. Trevor Trippi with a double pump that won't go. Scott Kruger down the floor. Here's Middleton again. He wants the ball. A little hesitant on the shot. Jackson got a touch, and Middleton picked up the loose ball. Middleton had a man open in the corner. Doug knocks it for an easy pass and just refused to look at him. That was not a good play by SIU. It's an easy pass when you got it, right, Coach? You always want to put the ball in the hand of somebody who can shoot. That's Leon Richardson. You know, Bob, earlier we were talking to some people at SIU and they simply said that Richardson could be a very, very good player, but he's kind of erratic. Kind of up and down. He starts out the second half, does some things real well, and then gets a couple quick fouls. That was an interesting play. Percy Hawkins was standing on the out-of-bounds line when he received the pass. Billy Ross sat on when Richardson came in. The Braves just seem to be the, unable to get over that hump when they get back even or get a three-point lead. They make a mistake that gives SIU some more life. Here's Knobstick driving. Dishing for Kruger. Just can't get the roll. Out of bounds on whom? Belongs to Bradley. They just seem to be laboring when they get the ball. They don't know where to go or where to put the ball. Taking up the pitch with Chuck Novosik. Maybe we can see a fellow like Hawkins take over here. Put the ball in his hands and see what he can do. Get this crowd excited. Get Bradley back in the game. Bingo! Three three-pointers for Paul Wilson. Braves lead at 40-37, and Rich Heron wants an SIU timeout. It may be time to rethink the zone defense. We'll take a timeout with 16.57 remaining. The Braves, after trailing by three at the half, lead the Salukis by three. We're three minutes and three seconds in to the second half. Bradley has been six better than SIU here. Their fans are pleased because they lead at 40-37 on two of four shooting, but both are three-pointers by Paul Wilson. He might bring them out of that zone. Let's see uh, next time down the floor what changes they did in the huddle at the timeout for SIU. Bradley, basically a man-to-man -man team. There's the turnaround, a little bit short from the hands of Billy Ross. first basket of the day. There's Hawkins. Hershey. Off to the right with it. Nice rebound skying Steve Middleton. Hershey Hawkins has a 46 inch vertical leap and Middleton showed us a pretty good one as well. Little is shuffling up the feet by Todd Kruger on the turnaround jumper. He just turned around but didn't jump soon enough. Defensively now, I believe SIU is looking to match up possibly out of his zone, Partic particularly at the wing position. They're matching up with the shooters out here on the side, Bob. One point Bradley lead, 40-39, 16 minutes. Remaining in the basketball game, each team 6-6. Six six. Paul Wilson, 3-for-3 three three from three-point range in the second half. 
He brought him back with that three-point shot. Four-point Bradley lead. The biggest of the game for the Braves. Underneath, nice play. Back door coming. And a block as Wayne Harry couldn't get loose for the shot. Back the other way, Jackson. Bradley moved the ball up the floor without a dribble that time. Through the air, effectively through the open guy into the basket. Very good. SIU wants another timeout. Bradley's rolling now. They trailed by three at the half. Now they lead by six in the first four, 37 in the second half of play. We'll take a timeout, have more Valley basketball for you in a moment from the Carper Arena in Peoria. Baseball speed, and they're trying to get the tip up by a hook. Oh! Watching great moments from Bradley basketball really makes me work up an appetite. 12 points a game as a junior last year. Going one step farther, Bob. This would be a tough place to be 12, 15 points down. Sure would. Knopf took an outstanding free throw shooter today. Only 69% coming in, but he's four for four in this game. Check it, six for six now. Under 15 minutes to play, Bradley by four. SIU is still basically in his zone. Greg Jones has a dozen. Still a zone with a lot of matchup principles, particularly at the wing. Trevor Trippy following Steve Middleton, reaching around and grabbing. Trippy scoreless today. That's his second foul. Poor Trevor. Last year he had to replace Boise winners at forward. This year he's got to play point guard at 6'7". Unable to get the roll with Middleton, and there is Billy Ross with the follow. He's got four on the heels of a 21-point performance against SIU Edwardsville the other night. Wilson drilling one in. That was a bullet off the glass. Wilson taking charge. It'll be four on the point guard, Nurnberger of SIU. Great eye contact with the basket. Even though he was going to the hole and he was sliding slightly to the right, he never took his eyes off that basket. Obviously, then, the ball went in. Wilson completes the three-point play, leads off scores with 17. Here's the Bradley press on the heels of the successful free throw. Braves by 7, 50-43. SIU led by as many as seven in the first half. Richardson on the offensive rebound, taken away there by Hawkins, and then Nurnberger fouled by Luke Jackson, a center following a guard, that's number three on the Bradley big man. Trempy's doing a very good job on Middleton. Every time Middleton moves, Trempy's there. As you can see right now, standing off to the side of the foul line, he's right in his pocket, trying to use some size to intimidate him defensively. You saw 14 Wayne Hurry coming back in. Six minutes and six seconds into the second half. Hari again talking. This is Middleton against Trimpy. Good one-on-one -on -one player Middleton is, but Trevor cuts him off. Nopsik receives the pass. Working his way into the lane and it just wouldn't go for him, but he did draw the foul. And it'll be on Greg Jones, his first. Greg has one. Nopsik has a very uncanny ability to get to that foul line. Like sure to take it to the floor, to the hole. Um, I think maybe if he'd pull up and hit a jump shot every now and then, he might be able to even take it further. Seven of seven from the stripe today. Nopsik from Lawrenceville, Illinois. A three-year letterman at SIU. He's the only guy who started every game a year ago. He has a dozen. Saluki's hanging in there at 5045, long way to go. Change the zone from a 2-3 to a 1-2-2. Two, two. No, no, no. Won't go for Hawkins. Oh, brother, Luke Jackson up in the rafters. That's why they call him Luke Skywalker around here. 
That was a nice tip. And then Nopsik looking for somebody open underneath, but there was no one in Maroon waiting for the pass. SIU has to be careful now. They don't want to go two or three times down the floor and not score here and have Bradley convert. That could just about bury him if they're not careful. That was the 18th Southern Illinois turnover. Bradley has coughed it up a dozen times. Wilson gets it for Jones, 16-footer in traffic. Whoa, brother. Mercy Hawkins reached behind him and just powered the ball into the hoop. At the other end, it goes for Tim Richardson. He's into double figures with 10. Both teams getting up and down the floor very quickly here the last couple of times. Junior from Havana, Illinois, that is, and into the game, 33, Todd Kruger, playing with two points and three fouls. Little instruction there for Steve Middleton. Middleton's going to have to get more involved offensively, I believe, here in the next four, five, six minutes. Well, they can't win if he doesn't reach double figures. He only has eight. Exactly. They need a set drive out of him Bob, to make it really happen here in the next six or seven minutes. Hilden High School in Brooklyn, New York is where the junior played. And it's 56 48. Ever trippy for Hershey Hawkins. Jackson with a turnaround. The freshman is doing some growing up here in the second half. Coach Allback, very happy to see that happen. Six well, SIU has nobody to stop him. Richardson goes 6-9, but Jackson out away from the basket like that. What are you going to do? SIU has some makeable shots there. There's Hawkins. He's got that look in his eye. Off for Jackson! Just won't go. Knobstick on the foul. Boy, you can tell when Hershey's going to take it into the paint. When you give Hawkins that ball and let him do something with it, either score, pass, he makes something happen. There he goes. Good vision. He saw Jackson baseline right. He saw him and he never tipped the defense. He never looked at Jackson on his right. He took it to the hole, drew the defense to him, and did saw Very, very good. Billy Ross back in as Todd Kruger takes the seat. They also checked in Brian Welch. He's playing guard with Wayne Harry as Nuremberger has the seat with four fouls. Luke Jackson came in only shooting 36%. He's number two in block as Rich Heron ponders a situation where he's down by 11 on the road. Jackson is number two in block. The number one man is the guy who won't play the rest of the year, Donald Powell. That's how well he played defensively in only seven games this year. Bradley turned the heat up with a little press here. They'd like to get out here and expand this lead at this time. Trippy almost has a steal. Now Jones gets it for Trippy. Here's Wilson. That is a defensive foul and a basket. What a move by Paul Wilson. Wilson took the ball to the basket. Very strong. Let's watch Wilson take the ball to the basket. Loose ball, tipped around, finally recovered by Trimpey, up the floor. Wilson does an acrobatic move, lays it in. Great ball and body control. Hari on his second foul that play. Wilson looking for his 20th point. As good as a swish. Bradley now by 15, 63, 48. And Stan Albeck is spending more time on his feet now. He is a little more relaxed about the way his team is playing, although he's trying to get a 10-second call, and he comes stomping his feet on the floor and gets it as the officials made the 10-second call in the backcourt. 
This press has been very effective the last three or four times down the floor for Bradley. They got to get Nuremberger back in there for ball handling, so Wayne Hari sits down. That now, eight SIU turnovers in this half, and 20 in the game. Eight turnovers in under 10 minutes. Luke Jackson with the follow. Paul Wilson kept it alive. That's a dozen for him, and this one is turning into a blowout unless the Salukis do something dramatic in a hurry. Luke Jackson just went up stronger and higher than everybody else. He got that and stuck it back in. Kruger almost had it taken away. Good defense by Trevor Trimpey, and then a glance out of bounds off of Brian Welch. It was SIU 35-32 at the half. They have 13 points in the second half to 33 for Bradley. Well, I think you made an excellent call. Bringing Nuremberger back in was a good move, and they really needed him to run that kill. Three-pointer won't go for Paul Wilson. Transition back the other way. This is Brian Welch. Taken away by the Braves. Jones for Hawkins. Too far. But you know something, Mike? At the other end of the floor, SIU has to stay under control when they, even when they get a break. They're trying to make too many things happen when there's nothing there. I don't believe they're quick enough to force the score at the end of the break. And they can eat, like you said, pull it out, make sure they get something that counts. Not throw the ball away. The quickness on Bradley is bothering him somewhat. They dump it inside, and it just won't go for Billy Ross. A two-shot foul coming up. It'll be on Trevor Trippy, his four. Well, Trevor won't remember this one as one of his outstanding offensive ball games, but he has really been an important man in that defense since halftime on the press. Now we're going to see Anthony, Anthony Manuel to replace him. Anthony Manuel Trevor has done an excellent job of getting in Middleton's pocket. Really took Middleton out of the game defensively. Now, Manuel, let's see if he can duplicate the job he did in the first half, Bob. I'm sure that was very impressive to the coaching staff at Bradley. Billy Ross, SIU needs all these free throws. They've got to score these points when the clock is not moving. Still a long way to go, 10-01. For this free throw, they'd be trailing by 15. A little pressure on Manuel now, maybe because uh, he's new. Off the bench, keep the pressure on him. a great bounce pass for Greg Jones who had 16 and he did not start the game. He hasn't forgotten how to pa pass while he was sitting down, has he? That was outstanding. Oh, look out, Doug Nostick. Coming out of the sky was Paul Wilson. Two falls for Paul today. Both of them pretty nasty. Four fouls now for Paul. They'll get him out of there and bring Len Bertolini in. Steve Middleton's okay. Paul Wilson has had a wonderful ball game offensively. Coming into the game, averaging 11 points a game, Bob. Did an excellent job, particularly with the three-pointer. Very impressive with the three-pointer. And he's not through yet. Sitting down with four. Again, free throws now for SIU. Nobstick has a dozen today. He's been perfect from the strike. Oh, but he misses a one and one. That hurts. Doesn't happen very often from that young man. Alley oop! Oh! Luke Jackson after Hershey Hawkins couldn't find it. Jackson has a career high 14. Nobstick driving. What a shot there, but it wouldn't fall. And he is hammered by Jackson's elbow. Better check Doug to make sure he's got all his teeth. He really got slammed. That'll be four on Jackson. Watch this at the other end for the Bradley Braves, Mike. You see the Hawk get his hand on it, just miss it out of nowhere from Jackson. That looked like a tip drill off the glass. He came from maybe mid-court, who knows, but when he came, he was skywalking, there's no doubt about it. Wow. Jackson playing a wonderful game offensively. He sits down with four, as did Wilson. This time, Mr. Novsik does not miss. Doug has 13. Look for maybe SIU to go to man-to-man -to -man this time down the floor and create some defensive pressure to try to get back in this ballgame. 
The big question is, can they match up well enough to play good man-to-man -man full court defense? Rick Heron, before the game, admitted his team could not play good half-court man-to-man because Bradley is too big for his salute. There's a good turnaround by Greg Jones, who has 18. I think that's a good point, but sometimes you need to make a change just to show them a different face to your defense. Another turnover, Hersey Hawkins, and that's taken away by Ty Nurnberger. Jumper, yes. Nurnberger has nine. Excuse me. Nurnberger did it all that time. He made a mistake, hustled back, got the ball back, went up the floor, under control, had a shot, stuck in the hole. That's what coaches look for. The guys who never give up even after they've made a mistake, they don't hang their head. On the back of a Saluki is Hersey Hawkins, and Middleton is holding his right knee, which already has the brace on it. That'll be number one on Hersey. Hersey has one. This has been a tough physical game here this afternoon. It's kind of like the way you and Dan Issel used to play Kentucky, bumping some folks around, huh? Well, back then, I think that might be all you could have done, but uh, this is as physical game as I have seen in a long time. And there's guys out here all about the same size, Bob, and they're all banging and knocking and giving the effort. And on the boards, when they go up, they go a big, strong, a lot of elbows flying in there. Steve Middleton, only nine points today. He's averaging 18. Seventy-one fifty-five. Clock is still with eight twenty remaining. Be interesting to see if we can get a little pressure here, maybe full court or half court. Not yet. Home team by fifteen. They've won twenty-two straight here. They took control of this one in the first seven or eight minutes out of the locker room when they turned a three-point deficit into a fifteen-point lead. Anthony Emanuel, Nurnberger tipping it away, and right to Len Bertolini. Percy Hawkins on the dish. Bradley can afford to be patient here. They worked it down to 15 on the shot clock, and Greg Jones was fouled by Billy Ross, his first. Might as well work it down, Mike. You're in the last seven and a half minutes here, and you lead by 15. That's about all Bradley can do now is have patience, look for a good shot, while also running that clock down. They don't want to get past that timeline of being deliberate, but they sure want to use as much of that, of that clock as they can effectively. On the other hand, SIU, they want to stop that clock whenever they can. Create some turnovers. Jones has 19 now. Pulled down by Tim Richardson, who's back in there. He's playing with three fouls. They need him down the stretch, but he's going to be a tired young man after dealing with these Bradley breaks. Nurnberger penetrating. The one-handed push wouldn't go. Here's Morgini for Manuel back the other way. Underneath, Hawkins couldn't find the handle, and it belongs to SIU. And Stan Albert says, let's be a little more patient. That pass right down the paint. A little bit too risky. I'm sure uh, Stan's watching that clock as much as he's watching his team right now. Yes. Nicely done by Steve Middleton. Percy Hawkins with his second. And a chance for a three-point play. That could bring SIU back to within 13. Takes the ball to the basket. Got the man up. What he did very well was position that body without exposing the ball on the shot, which drew the foul. That's why we told the folks in our pregame segment what an outstanding one-on-one -on -one talent Steve Middleton is. Bradley calling timeout, and we will take a break with 7.05 remaining. Well, the Salukis aren't out of this one yet. They're down by 13, 72-59.
And in eastern sunny Caribbean, they still do. Eastern, we're the one to the sun. Buying a used car can be quite a gamble. You're never sure what you'll end up with. National Car Rental Used Cars are cream puffs, averaging just over a year old. We keep our cars in top condition. Each comes with our exclusive two-year, 24,000-mile limited warranty covering every major system. Don't gamble with luck. Get a sweet deal from National. Check the phone book for the National Car Rental location near you. For a quick, inexpensive meal, you can have this or... Shakey's Buffet. Cost about the same, but you get a little bit more at Shakey's. The salad bar, loaded with garden fresh vegetables, a variety of Shakey's delicious pizza, golden fried chicken and deep fried potatoes, piping hot pasta, and more. Well, that's the long and the uh, short of it. Lunch for $3.69 and dinner for $4.19 in Bloomington on Veterans Parkway in Oakland. Saturday, join us on the Valley Network at noon Central Time. We'll be in Omaha at the Civic Auditorium up there. The Blue Jays of Tony Baroni will be home to take on the Bulldogs of Drake. Hope you can join us for Des Moines against Omaha next Saturday afternoon on the Valley Network. Mike and I will be there. Hope you can join us. There's your foul situation. Jackson, Trippy, and Wilson. Jackson and Wilson have had wonderful offensive games for Bradley. But up front, the difference, Mike, 27 points better is Bradley than SIU, 53 to 26 on the front line. Too big a spread, Bob, too big a spread. 21 for Greg Jones. He was noted by Joe D'Alfonso, the SID here at Bradley, as a real key to the Braves coming off the bench at forward. I'd say he's been opening that door today with that key with 21 points say that he delivered uh, all they needed today and some. He's having a career game. Ty Nurnberger. Knobstick, three-pointer, well short. He looked down to check the line, and then hustling on the follow, he fouled Hersey Hawkins. That'll be two on Doug, but I like the way this guy's strapped. There's Todd Kruger who comes back in. Knobstick really goes after it. Interesting thing about him, he is a better three-point shooter for the year. And he is a two-point shooter. Now that, that's a little hard to understand as a basketball person, but, and he's a tremendous foul shooter, Bob, but how many guys out there can say they shoot that long one better than they do anything else? From three-point range, Knopsik shoots 59%, 57%. From two-point range, 35%. What's going on? You think he's trying to send the NCAA a message that maybe that line's too short? If he's not trying, he may be still doing it. That's 16 for Hersey Hawkins. He took a bump on his knee, Middleton did, went to the locker room for a little while, came back a moment ago. Boy, that's a nice jumper from Ty Nurnberger. Beautiful arc on the shot, it switched through. There's your score, it's a 15 point spread with 6.05 remaining. SIU still in that zone, trying to expand it a little bit though, and playing tough at the wing. Bruce Morgini, he has four, and on the shot, a foul against Greg Jones of Bradley. It'll be a one and one at the other end on a pushing foul on the shot. We were talking about the physical play today. If you remember back through the history of the Valley, having grown up in Ohio, I remember the Valley way back when. Very physical teams with tremendously talented players. The guys who would bang and knock under the boards. And if you didn't come ready to play under the boards in the paint of Valley, back then, even now, uh, you weren't going to get the job done. That's why some of them call it the Valley of Death for visiting teams especially. Tough to win on the road in this league. Tough to win here on the road, that's for sure. I don't know about the rest of them. Hey, I tell you, it used to be pretty tough in the old air airplane hangar up here too. Visiting teams hated to play in that place. There's a reaching foul in the backcourt. That's about, that's about the first sign of any backcourt defense we've seen by SIU. Rich Heron evidently feels his team cannot match up well on the press and will give up too many easy baskets. So he's sending the quick Brian Welch into the backcourt alone. 
against a pretty quick guy in Anthony Manuel. It's always easy to say what you should do by the textbook, but if your players uh, physically are hurt or don't have the skill level to do it against a certain team, it's very tough to execute a press or half court trap. You don't have the right personnel. Rich Heron does have a couple of redshirt freshmen that he'll be looking to in the future. Nopsik had it hit off this end. Nopsik no, did it out again. I thought he said white, but he said out on white, so SIU gets it. Nurnberger, Clark Kruger. Welch looking for someone open. Off the leg of Kruger. You know, Rick Heron has a couple of freshmen redshirted. 6'5", Eric Griffin out of Carrier Mills, Illinois. And 6'10", freshman, Dave Bush. And I love the place he's from. Hoopston, Illinois. They play some hoops down there. Coach Heron obviously is building for the future. He's got some good, solid young players. He's won uh, six games. He won only eight last year. So, hey, he's improved. There's no doubt about it. 23 SIU turnover. Craig Jones can't get it. And it's controlled by Kruger. Bradley's turned it over 15 times, which is okay. When you're leading by 16 points. From the corner, it's short from Nobsik. Here comes Anthony Manuel. standing back to an open for a layup. But no, tunnel vision for Greg Jones. That's three on him. Got another angle here. Looks like he might still be moving. Tough call. At the other end, Nopsik took it to the hoop and couldn't score. Manual for Hersey Hawkins. That's what I saw. Pretty good service from your point guard. He can do it all. He is a really talented basketball player. Off the glass. Won't go for Welch. The ball hit the support of the basket. And it'll belong to the Bradley Braves. Taking a seat, Brian Welch. Back in there, though shaking up a bit, is Steve Middleton. Maybe a quicker team here, Bob. Maybe a little change in defensive team. Well, it's time for something. Down 18 with 4-10 left. Wilson dumping it down. There's Jones. Greg Jones has 23. His previous high was 21, so he has a new career high, as does Luke Jackson today. Basket is good from Middleton and a foul. That's the kind of move we were looking for from Middleton the whole ball game. A little one-on-one, -on -one shake and bake. Took it to the hole, scored, and got to the foul line. What could also be important is he stopped the clock. He has 15 now, Steve Middleton. Rick Heron has an outstanding player in the 6'2 junior from Brooklyn, New York. In fact, some people feel number 24 can turn out to be one of the best ever in Carbondale. Three-point play, he has 16. It's 83-66. Bradley has already set an arena record for points in the second half with 51 so far. And we've still got 340 left. That's a three-pointer by Paul Wilson. I wonder what he had this morning for breakfast. I'll tell you what, he has been hot. Nice follow there by Billy Ross. Or was it Middleton? It was Middleton. He has 18, his season average. Paul Wilson has one, two, three, four, five three-pointers in this game. Rick Heron got to take a timeout. Three ten left. Bradley by a bunch. 89-68. Paul Wilson has been unbelievable.
pitch, Paul Wilson, and clear out. Five for five, did you say? That's why that play right there is one of the most exciting plays in basketball. It brings people up in their seat. It keeps them around late in the ballgame also. 89-68. Wilson now has a career high, 26. So the Braves are setting a lot of personal marks in this game. And I guarantee you, Valley coaches watching today all around our network are suddenly diagramming defenses to stop Paul Wilson and Hersey Hawkins for Mr. Wilson's three-pointer. Into the paint. Nice, strong move by Billy Ross. He has eight. 89-70, 250 left. Well, you called it, Mike. You were expecting a high-scoring game, and you got it. We're not done yet. There could be some big numbers on the board, I would imagine, before it's over. of course had an unbelievable game early in the season back in is Brian Welch against Michigan in the Coca-Cola NIT Classic the Wolverines 115 to 107 over Bradley that was a sign of things to come for Stan Albeck's team he promised us that this team would shoot a three-pointer the first time down the floor and they did but they lost we just saw Middleton hobble off the floor. We hope it's not an injury that's going to keep him out very long. Five seconds. you got to get rid of the ball. It doesn't matter if you're dribbling or not. I'd like to thank our statistician, Ron English, from the Valley office today for some outstanding help. The guy's versatile. He was also your guest at halftime. That's 13 for Nuremberger. 89-73. The Braves are coasting to their seventh win of the year and a 1-0 Valley record. SIU has a lot of home games coming up, three straight at home, so you Saluki fans, get behind your team. This is the time in the game where everybody plays. It's time to show the coaches you've got something to do and to play with for the rest of the year. Nuremberger short. Percy Hawkins down the court for Anthony Manuel. He's looking for Hawkins. Percy oh, fell heavily. Might have been Brian Welch on the ball. Manuel did a good job drawing the defense that time, Bob, on the fast break to him. Laid it back off to Hawkins coming hard to the basket. Percy Hawkins will leave if he hits these three throws. He'll be replaced by Mike Cash, a 6'3 freshman from Lowell, Indiana, who has not scored, and a chance for some of the other guys to play. Percy has 20. Time to show the coach that maybe he should play a little bit more. There's Cass, the freshman from Indiana. He wants to be an engineer someday. He'll major in that here at Bradley. Percy Hawkins retires with 21 points and three fouls. I think what Coach Allback told us earlier that he was a very unselfish player proved to be a very true statement. Greg Jones also checked out with a career-high 23 in favor of Lynn Bertolini. Everybody wants the freshman to shoot. So the other freshman did it, Luke Jackson. He has 16. He has been outstanding today. 14 of those in the second half. Exactly. He's really done a super job in the second half on the board and offensively. SIU is bringing in all their substitutes now. Scott Hesse is already in. Also coming in, Jay Schaefer. Anthony Manuel taking his seat for the Bradley Braves. Anthony today, four points. Did a good job at point guard in a substitute role. Coach Allback was looking for that from him. Could be a sign of some good things in the future for that young man. Is that, we 
have a player in for Bradley. We're having trouble spotting. It must be Jeff Anthony, who's wearing number 50. He takes the shot and misses. Normally, he wears 14. Bertolini keeps it alive for Jackson. 45 seconds remaining. It's street ball time now in Peoria. And the rebound there for Jay Schaefer of SIU. Down for Welch. Ryan Welch, now it's on top. Wayne Hari with the shot. Got his own rebound and scored. That's good four for him. Good effort this time in the ball game. Very good effort. 20 seconds. Bertolini. A rebound. Scott Hesse of SIU. Back the other way. Here comes Welch with a layup, and he has this first two. 94-79. Time running out. Bertolini. Back door. Yes. Jeff Anthony. And the Braves win it. 96-79. Nicely done by the Bradley Braves here today, Mike. Bob, I'm glad we got Jeff Anthony's name straight and his number right before he made that last one. We sure don't want to rob him of any airtime here, huh? That's right. Dan Albeck now, 7-6 on the year. His Braves win it by a score of 96-79 as our action comes to an end here from Bradley this afternoon. This has been a presentation of Creative Sports Marketing, the executive producer, Bray Carey, and now for Mike Pratt, Bob Carpenter. So long from Peoria, the Braves 1-0 in the MPC.